The Light of Egypt, The Science of the Soul, Section 1, The Genesis of Life, Chapter 1, The Realm of Spirit, Involution. Being uncreated, eternal, alone, says Dr. John Young when speaking of the Creator and the creation, certainly no inspired writer ever penned a more sublime truth than is contained in the above words. Pure spirit is diffusive, non-atomic, uncreated, formless, self-existent being. Silent, motionless, unconscious, divinity, possessing in its sublime purity the one sole deific attribute expressible in human language as absolute and unconditioned potentiality. Such is the realm of spirit, which, for the sake of linguistic convenience, has been termed by the occultist the realm of the unmanif unmanifested being. With the first emanation of this inconceivable state we have now to deal. The Kabbalah of the early Jewish rabbis contains long and elaborate treatises upon the various emanations of the ten Sephiroth, which for the most part are written in such an allegorical style as to be practically useless to most Western students and even to oriental minds are unsatisfactory, and in many respects misleading. The first emanation from this realm of spirit, formless being, claims the student's closest attention. It forms the deific keynote of the divine anthem of creation. This first emanation, called by the Kabbalists the crown, means, when stripped of its mystical veil, simple and naked activity or motion. Thus, we see that the first action of divinity, unconscious mind, is thought, and thought implies vibration or motion. At the, moment of the deific, at the moment, the deific mind vibrates with thought. There springs forth from the infinite womb of creation the dual of all future greatness. This duad is the Kabbalistical twins, love and wisdom, which in turn mean the attributes, attraction and repulsion of force and motion. They are male and female, co-equal and co-eternal, and express themselves externally as activity and repose. No matter how recondite or abstruse our speculations may be, when the orbit of our metaphysical meditation is complete, we shall find ourselves face to face again with our original starting point, which is this infinite triad of love, wisdom, and crown, or, in other words, the one primal force containing unlimited potentialities within itself. Back of this we cannot go. Within this divine trinity or godhead, as students and investigators of nature's occult mysteries, we must rest contented, consoling ourselves, whenever necessary, with the certain knowledge that the nearer we appear to approach the great white throne of the Infinite One, the further does the divine center recede from us. If this were not so, there could be no such thing as eternity for the atoms of differentiated life. Consequently, the immortality of the soul would be an empty dream, a mere figment, hatched by some infernal power within the overheated imagination of poor deluded man. Before going further, the reader should commit to memory the following primary doctrines, taught by the occult initiates of all true wisdom. They are doctrines to us in our present state, in so far that we cannot demonstrate them externally by any known form of experiment. 1. The whole universe is filled with the deific presence of God. That is to say, the universe is permeated with the pure, motionless, formless spirit of divinity. 2. The universe is boundless and unlimited, a circle whose circumference is everywhere and whose center is nowhere. The universe is dual and consists of the manifest and the non-manifest. Hence, deity is progressive in his infinite scheme of spiritual unfoldment. 3. The divine one life principle emanates from the pure vortices, the central spiritual sun of the manifested universe. From this mighty inconceivable center of life emanate the spiritual rays of the Father, scintillating with divine activity, whereupon the vast, motionless void, the awful universe of God's silent, formless spirit, becomes alive with an infinite number of subordinate universes which means the rays of divinity are brought to focus at various points in space. These points, or foci, form the spiritual centers of smaller universes. 
An example of this can be seen upon our material plane by observing that primary suns throw off a series of secondary suns. These secondary suns throw off planets, and the planets become the parents of moons. By the science of correspondence, as it is above, so it is below. Remember these facts. The divine purpose of creation is the differentiation of the unconscious formless one, and the grand outcome of this divine purpose is the ultimation of deific intelligencies, separate minds reflecting the divine idea of the universal mind, conscious, individualized mentalities possessing immortal souls capable of eternal progression, who, as differentiated life atoms of the Creator, the grand arbiter of the whole, become themselves secondary creators and the arbitrators of the de destinies of worlds. The processes of creation are dual, and consist of involution and evolution. The one is inseparable from the other. Paradoxical as it may appear to the uninitiated, it is, nevertheless, a divine truth that the evolution and ultimation of spiritual life is accomplished by a strict process of involution, from the without to the within, from the infinitely great to the infinitely small. To better understand this mystery, we must have a recourse to a series of symbols. Accordingly, we conceive the divine focus of the primal essence as the spiritual center of a universe. This deific ray constitutes a triune godhead, from which emanates the pure white light to the formless one, or in other words, this center constitutes a realm of Sephiroth, a sun sphere of living potentialities, divine beings, infinitely beyond the highest archangelhood. As such, we may conceive it floating as a speck in the infinite ocean of divine love, surrounded by the effulgent brightness of the nameless crown. This divine sphere is passive in such a state. Nirvana reigns upon the blissful radiance of its motionless bosom. But the time now approaches when its mission in the scheme of creation must commence. The moment arrives, and as soon as the first creative pulsations of thought vibrate, the whole sphere of motionless, formless white light flashes forth, sparkling with living energy. And now, behold what a change has taken place. The soft white light has ceased to be, and in its place there is raining forth in every conceivable direction mighty oceans of force, each ocean differing in velocity, color, and potentiality. The passive has become active, and the motionless has commenced to move, traversing the void of space upon the wings of light. Deity has become refracted, a portion of the infinite soul decomposed, and its original unlimited potentialities resolved into a series of active but limited attributes. This is related in the mystical language of the Kabbalah as the evolution of the seven active sephiroth from the first trinity, love, wisdom, and crown. It is these seven active sephiroth that constitute the seven principles of nature. They form seven points or sub-centers around their parent center, the spiritual sun, and are the seven worlds of angelic life from whose divine matrix issue all the life atoms of their universe. From the foregoing, the reader will see that when the dawn of any universe commences, the pure formless essence is indrawn from the realms of the unmanifested into their sun sphere of creative life, previous to being involved by the deific will of the angelic hierarchies, and by such contract it immediately undergoes a change. It is formless no longer but atomic, and endowed with an attribute or state it had not before, polarity. This polarity at once evolves a sort of partnership, and equally divides the formless substance into two parts each a necessary attendant upon the other in manifested existence. One is positive, the other, of course, negative. The positive ray is that which constitutes the living spiritual fire of all things, and its atoms are infinitely fine. The negative ray is ever tending toward a state of response, repose, or inertia, and its atoms are coarse and loose as compared with those of the positive ray. It is the substance formed by the negative ray that constitutes every species of matter, so-called, from the inconceivably fine etherealized substance, which composes the forms of the divine archangels of the sun, down to the mineral veins of dense metal in the earth. 
Therefore, when speaking broadly of spirit and matter, the terms are perfectly unmeaning in an occult sense. For that which we call spirit is not pure spirit, but only the positive or active attribute of that which we term matter. Hence matter is so far unreal, it is only an appearance produced by the negative ray, and this appearance is the result of polarity or mode of motion. The positive is straight and penetrating, the negative is round and enfolding. With this brief but necessary digression we resume. From the seven angelic states before mentioned, spiritual involution commences. Each one of the seven spheres is a reflection of one of the seven refracted principles, which constitute the divine mind of the angelic creators. From this reflection spring forth angelic races, second only in mental power and potentiality to their parents. Then, in turn, are produced still lower celestial states, each state or sphere corresponding in nature, color, and attribute to the sphere from which it was born or reflected. But though each state in the descending scale is similar by correspondence, it becomes less in size, more material. The spiritual potencies of its angelic races are weaker, that is, less active, because they are more and more involved within matter as they descend in the scale. Thus does involution proceed, involving state after state and sphere after sphere, forming a series of circles whose line of motion or descent is not in the plane of its orbit. Hence the form ultimates itself as a spiral until the lowest point is reached. Beyond this, motion is impossible, and the infinitely great has become the infinitely small. This is the great polarizing point from which the material world is reflected. It is the lowest possible spiritual state of life, which formed the first ethereal race of human beings upon our planet, and thus ushered into the existence the famous golden age of mythological celebrity.